Hello there. I'm Jeff, the Grumpy Chef, and we're making tonight a vegetarian baked rigatoni for Easter dinner. So stay tuned to watch how I make this, and maybe you millennials will learn some life skills. Hey guys, and welcome to my new channel. This is Stephen Mango. You guys might recognize me from my other two channels, Mango Tea, or I spill the tea on beauty drama and beauty influencers, or over on Mangotology, where I take you inside the world of the Church of Scientology. But this is my very new channel. We have a lot of really exciting videos coming for you guys. So make sure to go down below, click on that subscribe button, the bell icon, so you stay notified when I release a new video. There's gonna be a whole wide bunch of videos on here, everything from vlogs, stories, times, challenges, pranks. I don't really know yet because this is the very first video we're filming for this channel. Jeff wants to do this whole series where he teaches you guys life skills, cooking. I don't want to ruin everything for you guys, but anyways, I'll let you guys continue on in this video. We are going to be cooking Easter dinner for you guys, so keep on watching. Hello, this is Cooking with Jeff, the Grumpy Chef. Hello out there in internet land. We're, this is our first episode of the Grumpy Chef. And what we're going to be doing is cooking this baked rigatoni meal. Now, the first thing you want to do is have all of your ingredients lined up so you're not running to the store because you've run out of something. So I'm just going to inventory for you. We have the pan that's going to be used for the sauce. We have rigatoni pasta. You want to have some cooking spoons, wooden, and this is heavy duty plastic. This is a, a, a soup, I mean a spoon rest, and you'll need that. Peeled tomatoes, tomato paste, olive oil, mushrooms, your vegans sausage, mozzarella, some spices, sugar, can opener, measuring spoon, a knife, cutting board. This will be where the baked pasta goes and some colanders and the pot to cook the pasta in. Where can they get this? This, guys, is a field roast. It is a imitation Italian sausage. Yeah. So this can be found in well, the most Well, you can get it at Vons or I got this at Vons, but they also have it at Gelson's. I don't, I only show, shop at Vons and, and Gelson's. So um, Trader Joe's may have something similar. And if you're vegan, you guys aren't going to obviously be using the mozzarella. Right. There are different variations of mozzarella cheese that's vegan. We'll, we'll that's get not to cheese. that where they have the cashew cheese and all that, and you can substitute that. So the first thing I want to show you, of course, is any good Italian meal needs garlic. Now, I've made uh, pre-done some garlic right here, so we wouldn't spend a half an hour doing the garlic. So I have most of my garlic in there. How much do they use? Well... This, this is a head of garlic. That is not to be confused with a clove of garlic. A clove of garlic is one of these little sections here. I'm gonna break one off. That's a clove of garlic. And uh, just as my best friend of childhood, his mother told him to put two cloves of garlic in the roast, and two and a half hours later, he'd put two and a half heads of garlic in the roast. So how do we get this skin off here? Take your knife, put this on the cutting board, press down. You're gonna hear a crack. Now it's very easy to peel off this skin. See, now I take my knife and I start dicing. Don't cut yourself. Use your thumb and forefinger as a brace. Okay, let's put this in here. Now, next thing you need is olive oil. Get a good quality of uh, extra virgin olive oil. I wish I could tell you to put X amount. I just sort of cover the bottom, not too much. You don't want it too greasy. You want to be able to kind of have it slosh around the bottom. Now we're gonna- This is the off. hardest thing about cooking for me, guys, because if, unless it's like very specific, like, oh, you need to put a cup of it in. If it's like eyeball it, that's the part of cooking I don't get. Like, just like take a little peek or put a little pinch. I'm like, how much is a pinch? I have big hands. Like, I don't know, like that sort of thing. So that's the hardest thing about cooking for me. But let's go listen to Jeff because he's teaching us. He's our dad and he's gonna teach all of us. Oh, we got the wrong burner on. That's, that's helpful. Here we go. So I'm gonna put it on about three. And you see how much is covering the bottom? It's kind of sort of covering it. You don't want it too much. All right. Now, next thing we have, I got this can opener. It's from Tupperware. And uh, if you don't have one of these, then what you really need to do for every can that you open to avoid disease, because these come from big warehouses, 
and and Lord knows what is running around these warehouses, you want to take and make sure that you clean the top of the can before you open it. So you get any dust, dirt, or God forbid there have been some rodents running around there, you won't have that. I, I don't need to have that because this is the kind of can opener that lifts the whole exterior of the top off. So I'm going to open this up. This is a large can of Cento Italian uh, peeled tomatoes. That's what you want for this basic sauce. Can Penelope have some baked rigatoni when we finish cooking? She may, she may not. What about Hidalgo? Now you see how this top came off here just like that? Mm -hmm. Save that. Now we're going to do the same thing with this tomato paste. What's the difference between tomato paste and regular tomatoes? Uh, these are just tomatoes in uh, their own juice and paste is a distilled thickened concentrated formula of tomato and they have a lot of natural sugars in them as well. Now you hear this going on it means our garlic is starting to braise in the olive oil and we want to keep that going we don't want to burn it so watch it bubble and so forth. I always knew that if I was going to marry someone that I want them to know how to cook. That's the biggest thing for me. Like if I was in a relationship, I don't care about pretty much any other aspect of a man. Well, not that I don't care about any other aspect. I mean, there's things that I care yeah, about, I but, but I always wanted someone who could be able to cook because like I said, I don't know anything about cooking. I'm vegetarian guys too. As we know, I've been vegetarian for like 15 plus years. So now there's a lot of vegan restaurants, especially like in LA, like we've gone to like so many different vegan restaurants and stuff like that, but it's nice and it's great to have someone who can cook for you. But after Jeff works all day long, like it'd be nice if I knew how to cook something basic. But then again, I do a lot of other things around the house. But anyways, we're getting back to our cooking tutorial. So now what are we doing, Jeff? One thing I forgot to mention you're gonna need is a spatula like this, a little rubber spatula, but okay. You see how this is now cooking nicely? Uh, now we're going to take our can of tomatoes. This is tricky. You want to be careful you don't get it too hot. Otherwise, when you put the tomatoes in, it's going to splatter up and you can get burned. Now, I've of course Look washed my hands. So Look be, your, this is time. Curly from Three Stooges. That's Curly. All right, now ready. So we're going to take this tomato. You see, I take the tomato out. I've washed my hands carefully and we're going to actually squeeze the whole thing in my hand. Is that the only way to do it? This is the only way to do it. Yeah, I don't want to get my hands dirty. Well, then you shouldn't cook because you're going to get your hands dirty if you cook and you're going to sort of mush it and kind of and be careful when you squeeze it out, it can go everywhere. So you want to keep it low in the pan but not have that olive oil too hot that it splatters up and burns you. See, there's basil that comes in this kind of tomato. Again, squeeze it, and what you're doing is sort of mashing it with your hands so that it disintegrates more easily as it cooks. We're gonna do this whole can. There we go. How did you learn to actually cook this? Uh, well, my mother taught me, my grandmother taught me, um, that's what they did back in the day. You learned life skills. You learned how to do laundry, you learned how to clean, you learned how to fold clothes, you learned how to, you know, do everything. I wasn't so good at the handyman stuff, which I wish I was. Okay, now. You should have done it as clickbait when all the tomatoes were on your hand and say that you sliced your finger off trying to... Mm. Okay, you now you take like you take some water and you rinse this around a little bit so you've swirled. Is it clean to drink it out of the sink like that? It's you tap water. No, I don't use bottled water? water. It's tap water. It's probably healthier. than They found plastic particles in all this bottled water and arsenic. So the tap water is now deemed to be safer than all the expensive bottled water that we buy. Okay. We so love you, a conspiracy theorist. You you've, uh, start swishing around there. You pour that in there like that. Now. We take the tomato paste. This is what you're going to need your spatula for because this is very thick. So just kind of spoon it out like so. You notice I have an apron on. You want to wear an apron when you're cooking something like this so that you don't ruin your clothes. And Steve mentioned, oh, that apron has a stain on it. Well, guess what? It's clean, it's been washed, but it's gonna have a stain. If it doesn't have a stain on it, it means you're not cooking. It means you're calling Postmates every other damn day. Okay, 
So now calling Postmates, you request them on the app to come. Yeah, I don't call Postmates. So, all right, now we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to take some tap water. This is thicker, a little How harder. Much? Well, about a, a third to half, somewhere in there, like we did with that can of peeled tomatoes. Now we're going to pour this in here. Now we put these in here, and we put this in the sink. I find it really helpful to clean as you go. If you clean as you go, then you don't have as much of a mess to deal with later on. Now you got this in here. Start putting this up to about five. We're going to get this to come to a boil. We're going to stir this. And you're going to stir this periodically when you're not on your phone. Maybe you can get away from your phone for 30 seconds to stir this soup or soup, stir this sauce every so often. But does it look like soup? It looks so watery. Well, it will thicken as it goes on. But before we do that, we have to add our herbs and spices. Now you can use any kind that you want. I'm going to uh, only suggest a few things because I'm not going to give away my whole grandmother's recipe or else I will be disowned. But you might want to put a couple bay leaves in there. You buy them like this, see? Bay leaves. Um, this is powdered garlic. We use fresh, regular garlic, so we're not going to use this. But if you're too damn lazy, like most of you are, why go ahead and use this. All right, oregano. This is not any great secret that I'm telling you that we put oregano in this. We're going to use two teaspoons. One. Do you need to get that thing as the teaspoon machine? Two. What teaspoon machine? What you're using well, you can buy this or any other. There's a plenty of in the store. They sell. Uh, they'll have a tablespoon, a teaspoon, all together. They'll sell it. Target has it. Uh, your local supermarket. Uh, some people. I don't use this, but some people will put red pepper flakes in there. Oh, yummy! I don't. Uh, take fresh ground pepper. Do about how many turns? Um, about ten to twelve. Let's make sure it's coming up. Three. You guys need to ask Jeff about how he feels about me being a vegetarian or about vegans in general. Well, let's just say it's not my cup of tea. What uh, is your favorite meat items to cook? I like pork. Pork? And I like beef. And I like barbecue. Barbecue is my favorite of all. Especially barbecued pork and beef. Isn't it ironic that you're now a vegan chef? Well, I'm not really a vegan. And actually, it should be vegan, Chef. It's vegan. He always pronounces it like that. Yeah, it's the very reason annoying. I pronounce it that way is because it's the, really the correct way to think about it. Do you say the word vegetable? Do you say the word vegetarian? No, you say the word, I'm a vegetarian, or I'm going to buy vegetables. Therefore, you should be a vegan. You're not a vegan. Otherwise, you'd say vegetable and vegetarian. All right. Now we've got... Penelope those. looks hungry. She's always hungry. Now we're going to use a, a, an ingredient that I can't give away as part of the secret recipe from my grandmother. You'll just have to bear with me there. Uh, there's that. And then uh, a lot of people put in sugar. Um, I, I tend to not put in too much, maybe a, t a teaspoon. Why would you put sugar in it? Well, because the tomatoes are very acidic, like me, and they're tart. So sometimes the sugar helps cut the acidity of the tomatoes. It depends on, these are pretty high quality tomatoes, so I don't have to put much sugar in. Now, you notice it started coming to a boil. We've got all our herbs and spices in there. And so now we're gonna put this in our spoon rest and we're gonna put a cover on this and we're gonna let this uh, cook now. And we're gonna turn this down. See how it's boiling there? Yeah. So we're gonna turn this down to low. And we're gonna put a cover on it. And now we're gonna let it sit. How many hours? An, mm, two hours. And we'll occasionally come by and stir it. Just remember, if you can break away from your phone, remember to do that. We'll check back in periodically. Maybe an hour and a half, but you're gonna, every 20, 30 minutes, give it a stir. Then we'll go into the next part where we get the mushrooms ready and the vegan sausage and the cheese, or if you use the cashew cheese, that. Why anyone would want to use cashew cheese is beyond me, but uh, there it is. We got the real cheese. Okay, that's it for right now. We'll be back. 
Okay, we're back. It's around 6.30, and here's how our sauce is doing. You see it's thickened considerably, and it really smells good. We're going to keep that in here for right now. Now we're going to put the mushrooms in. So for the mushrooms, you buy fresh mushrooms, white ones in this case. Here's what you need to do. You don't just throw it in there. You see this stem here? You kind of manipulate it and tear the center out. Now you reach in and you peel this way. So you get all of this top layer, which isn't as tasty, can be better tasting. So you peel that. That's all done. And now we're ready to chop. Now, and if you haven't chopped before, take your knife, get a good paring knife, Hold it like this. See these fingers here are acting as a guard. So you can move back and chop the ends more thinly. Okay, I, I've done a bunch already so we wouldn't waste time. So now we're going to throw these in here. Now I realize you millennials like everything instant gratification. Well, this is an instant gratification. This is called making sauce and it takes several hours. So I know some of you are upset that we actually have to wait and stir and cook, but this is how things used to be when things were good and not just out of a can and crappy or brought to you by Postmates. I can't cook. I have to call Postmates. Well, now you're cooking. All right. Now, we're going to let that simmer for a while. While that's simmering, remember what I said, always clean up as you go. I've gotten rid of a lot of things that you saw that were here earlier. And this way we're going to keep on cleaning and make the end time cleanup a lot easier. And you also keep stuff out of your way. Okay. One thing you might have wondered, why to put the mushrooms in so late? because all that had to cook down. The mushrooms have a high water content, and if you put them in too early, they're going to disintegrate, and you'll never know that you ever had a mushroom in there. All right, now we go to the vegan sausage. This is by Field Roast. This is kind of a pain in the behind. What you have to do with these, they're links, and do not, I repeat, do not throw these in the pot. This has got a plastic casing around it. See, if you want to know the truth, real sausage, you know what the casing is made out of? The intestine. Yeah. Well, you fancy panty waist vegans can't handle that or the vegetarians. So they put this lovely plastic, that's appetizing, uh, casing over it. So we take one, for example. We also put this in late because real sausage you put in early. If you're not vegan and you want to make a meat sausage and use Italian hot or sweet sausage, you cook that first and that goes in with the tomatoes at the beginning of the process. But if you put this in there, it's going to get all watery and spongy. It's going to taste like you're chewing on a wet sponge and it's disgusting. So I put it in late so it doesn't have too much time to cook and absorb all that water. All right. So we cut one of the links off. We're going to use this handy dandy scissor to cut this end off. Now, see, we take this knife and we take, we take a slit down the side of it. And then we unwrap it. My God, that looks obscene, doesn't it? Okay. Um, take the wrapping off, sort of like a uncircumcised sausage. Now we're going to cut it into pieces. Use the serrated part. This is the serrated part of the knife. These little teeth here. I think they know that. You never know. You didn't know it. You had to call Postmates. Anyway, this is the serrated thing and just saw. If you press down too hard, it's going to mush and it's going to flatten and then you won't have the sausage. So we're going to do that again using these two fingers as kind of a guard. So we know how big the piece is and we doesn't, don't cut our, our hand off. Now this how many is, of those are you putting in? I'll probably put two in. So you don't have to cook them beforehand? No. They're already, this is fake meat, so it's already cooked. She looks very hungry. 
course she's hungry. She's always hungry. Should we give her some? No. How come? Because animals eat real meat. They don't eat this vegan crap. I will say these sausages are not bad for, for vegan sausages. I just, I learned from trial and error that if I put them in too early, they were disgusting when I tried to eat them. They'd be wet and gloppy. And really, it, it looked as like you took the kitchen sponge and tried to eat it. That's how fibrous and yucky it was. But putting in the last minute, really just for a couple minutes, we're gonna have it in here. Because remember, you, we're gonna cook this again now. This is the sauce and the meat. Now we're gonna assemble the actual baked uh, rigatoni portion. We take our big kettle. You need a big one. You need lots of water. Cold water, start out that. And we're just gonna fill this up to this line here. That's a line that's been established by water lime deposits that are from the years of using this. Nothing wrong with it. Not dirty, it's not gonna hurt you. Okay, we got our kettle full of water. Now we're gonna go over here. Turn it on high, because you don't you want to have it boil within the next three days. Another secret you're going to want to use, kosher salt. Always add kosher salt to your water when you want it to boil. Helps it go faster, and then it salts the water also. So I use a kind of a liberal amount of it. Now by keeping the lid on it, it's going to take about 15 minutes to boil. And there's an old saying, a watched pot never boils. If you keep on checking it, it'll never boil. So leave it alone. Now we're going to give this a stir here. We don't want this to cook too long. We're going to turn it off, in fact, because eventually, because we don't want to wait for this to do the 15 minutes that it's going to take. Otherwise, this will all be overcooked. All right, now we're going to uh, do the next part of this, which is preheating the oven for the garlic bread and most importantly for us to do the baked uh, rigatoni. The baking part is what happens in the oven. This is the boiling of the pasta, the cooking of the sauce. Then we're going to put these things together and bake it in the oven. So we're going to hit 350 to preheat. Now, Now it's going to tell us when the oven is ready and it's reached 350 degrees. What we'll do in the meantime is get the bread ready. You could have already called Postmates and already had a big ZD already sent here without going through all these steps. That's true because you love instant gratification. Because, because I was born in 1991. Well, I wasn't. And we know. And it, and yes, you could get it from Postmates long ago. But it wouldn't have been... Postmates made. really should sponsor me. Please sponsor me, Postmates. But, but it wouldn't... You aren't, don't you have the unlimited deliveries of I the do. Postmates? Yeah. So they should sponsor you. But um, it wouldn't be made with the care and love that goes into this sauce. Okay, continue. So now someone's gnawed off the end of this uh, lovely French... It was her. I don't think it was her. I, I think it was you. Now we take out our bread knife. We're not going to have the whole thing, so we'll just cut here. And we'll now cut this piece of bread in half. Why are we going to do that? Because we're going to make garlic bread. Again, be careful with the knife. We're cutting it lengthwise should be apparent. Now we fillet it open, as they say. But it's not a fish. It's not a fish, but it has been filleted. Now, if you are a vegan, you're going to want to use something like this, Smart Balance. But today we're using pure Irish butter, the finest that you can get. Good ingredients makes good food. Helpful to have one of these. It's a spreader. 
So you can How much do you put on? Well, you're going to see I'm going to put it down the length of it. Don't worry about this. These are crumbs from the matzah because not only is it Easter, it's Passover. And I made matzah brai yesterday. So uh, sometimes the matzah crumbs get into there. You should right. teach people how to eat cooked dacha from. Well, it's not as popular, but it's very easy. So we're just going to put little you know slivers of butter up and down this piece of bread I should have left this out and so it would be softer but I didn't I forgot when it goes into the oven won't it melt the butter it will melt the butter which mm -hmm. is the whole point so that you'll have warm bread with that's already buttered and will be mixed with garlic now um, remember we used we saw this earlier this garlic powder and I didn't use it for the sauce excuse me I'm going to stir the sauce time to stir the sauce well something like this is easier for use with garlic bread because otherwise you're putting little pieces of garlic up and down which you can do and have done but for our purposes it's much easier to simply sprinkle the garlic powder up and down this okay now we put this back here and we get some aluminum foil and we tear off a sheet of this wrap the bread in it we like the Christmas present fold it over now we're going to wait for the bell to signal that it's preheated and we're ready to go how long do you cook it for mm, 15 minutes it's hard to overcook it but you can you could burn it but about 15 minutes when we get to that part we're actually more concerned with getting the pasta cooked and the the rigatoni in the oven we're going to use this this is what we're going to use to bake the rigatoni. All right, so I turned off the sauce because I didn't want it to overcook. And as usual, the watched pot never boils. And I looked at it a couple of times. But now it's boiling. And so we're going to put the rigatoni in. We're going to use the whole box. Is that going to be enough for two people? It's enough for eight people. It's called the serving size, a portion size. So these go in. Be careful because the splash when they go in. Now use something like this to make sure they're not sticking together. We're going to put it on for 10 minutes. Now why am I putting it on for 10 minutes when it says 14 minutes? Because remember we're going to cook it more when we put it together with the sauce and bake it. If you cook it 14 minutes and then do that, you're gonna have mushy nursing home food pasta and I don't think you want that. Also, the bell went off telling us that we're at 350 degrees, which is perfect because that's what we're putting the baked pasta in. You'll see I haven't put the bread in because uh, the pasta will take 25 minutes once it's in the oven. When it's 15 minutes to go, I'll put in the bread and then it should be great. So now we're just going to wait the 10 minutes for the pasta to cook. All right, the ceiling fan or the stove uh, overhead fan is sucking up all the hot air. So bear that in mind, it should shut off soon. We're almost done, as you can see, a minute and 35 seconds, 35 seconds until the pasta is done. So get everything ready. You want to have your colander here, put this in the sink, in the deeper part of the sink. 1 minute 20 seconds. For you vegans, you're going to want to use pan instead of butter. So we'll use pan for this. We're spraying this on the sides so that when it, we bake the ziti, it's not going to stick and make a whole mess for serving it and uh, enjoying it and then the cleanup. Okay, 58 seconds. 
Remember, we've already turned this off. This is all done here, ready to be put in with the pasta. We'll open up our low moisture part skim mozzarella cheese. We're getting ready to put that in, because now we're going to assemble all the ingredients. And I know most of you are more than ready for it, because you actually had to wait a few minutes to eat something homemade and freshly prepared. 27 seconds. Be very careful when you have animals, as you can see here, because you're going to carry this boiling hot water over to that stove. Make sure you have two heavy-duty pot holders so you don't burn yourself. Yeah. All right, nine seconds. Here we go. I'm ready to turn it off. Really, you don't have to be this neurotic about how. Okay, the kitchen timer Hurry. is done. We're now taking this off. We dump excess water over here. You get a little facial while this is all going on. Opens up those enlarged pores. All right, now we pour this into the colander. Shake it out. So it's completely drained. That sh thing should shut off now since we've stopped using the stove. Put this in here so it's easy access. Now we're going to assemble the whole thing. Here's what we do. Make a layer. Now, that layer. Now we're going to start spooning in the sauce. How thick do you want to make this layer? How what? How thick do you make the layer of the sauce? Well, you can observe. I just put like a, a layer all around. So it's all even, more or less. Now we're going to sprinkle some cheese on. How much do you sprinkle? Well, I, I make a layer of it. You're going to find out in cooking, you know, unless it's baking really requires um, a recipe to the nth degree, because baking is all about science. Okay, now we're going to use the rest of this ziti. Now we're going to press it down a little bit. How is it, Drama? Drama? How is it? You just don't want her to burn herself. Okay. Now we put the rest of this on here. Is there going to be enough sauce? Yeah. She'll eat anything. We got a little extra here. Okay. Now put another layer of cheese on it. Is this the only cheese that we use on this? Yes. Some people use ricotta. But I don't, especially if you're a vegan, it's harder to find a substitute for ricotta. Well, maybe watch someone write in. How dare you? I know the substitute for the ricotta. Mm -hmm. You're canceled. You didn't tell us about the ricotta substitute. Okay. Now we put some foil on it. Oil is our friend here. Healthy amount. I'm just sort of covering it, not tightly. You want to be able to remove this about the same time we put the bread in. So this goes in now. It's at 350. Kitchen timer, 25 minutes. Boom. So we skipped the step where I put the bread in the oven. I didn't feel you had to see that. But now we got the bread, it's going to come out of the oven now. It's been in there for a while. And we're going to uh, slice it while we got another 2 minutes and 38 seconds for the uh, rigatoni. I keep wanting to call it ziti because I'm used to making baked ziti. Use a bread knife.
You can have big serrated edges. Then I put it in this bowl, Tupperware bowl. I put a little liner in there to make it really like Martha Stewart. Nicer. And this way it keeps the bread warmer. You do that. We put that out on the table. And one minute forty-nine seconds. I made the salad separately. I didn't feel like you had to see that, although maybe you folks need to see how to make a salad. So I didn't feel you needed to see the salad being made, but it's uh, romaine lettuce, the carrots, and red bell pepper. And it's tossed and dressed. We have the bread there, and now we're gonna take the rigatoni out of the oven. 50 seconds, but really 50 seconds here and there is not gonna make a difference. Does it have to cool? So there it is. This just fell out. So we're ready to serve. It's going to be good, Jeffrey. You will be the judge of that. I mean, how bad could it be? I mean, you never know. If I was cooking, then I'm sure it would be very horrible. Yeah, after you were talking about, like, oh, chopping the garlic and doing the olive oil, that's when I tuned out. Mm -hmm. That was even just too much. But I thought you wanted to learn how to cook. I did, but then I realized it's a lot of effort, and I still like Postmates. I'm still trying to get my Postmates sponsorship over here. That would be the best for me. If I got sponsored by Postmates, given the amount that I order guys, like thousands of dollars of Postmates every month, then it would actually be very, don't very really, beneficial. You don't really spend a thousand dollars a month. How much do you think I spend? Six hundred? Yes. Six hundred, a thousand. Okay, guys, let's look at this baked rigatoni here. This so then we can taste it and review it. That's my own because I didn't for it. Well, I like hot food. <laughs> <laughs> now we're having our mukbang. Part two is the mukbang. <laughs> Should we do part two mukbang? Why are you looking at me like that? What's wrong? Uh, what's your verdict? Well, I'm waiting for you to have yours and then I'll give mine. You have to have a bite. What do you think of it? Good. Not excellent, amazing, the best you've ever had? I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, the sauce is good. I, I, for me, I prefer penne or ziti to rigatoni. So you guys, rigatoni is my favorite. I love rigatoni more than anything, so that's why I made him cook it with rigatoni. Let's try the meat. Oh, the meat's good. The veggie meat. Don't cancel me, vegans. <laughs> it's not bad. And it's, you see, it's not mushy. I yeah. feel like it tastes more like a piece of sausage because you put it in at the end. Mm -hmm. It's good. Sauce is good. Thank you so much, guys, for watching Jeff's grumpy cooking. What would you call this? <laughs> The first episode of your series. Are you going to be coming back on the, the Grumpy channel? Chef? Oh, the Jim Grumpy Chef. You're going to come back and do more video tutorials for them. It depends if you guys like these videos. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let us know what you think about this video. If you want to see Jeff cook more food in the future, or and if you do want to see Jeff cook more food in the food future, what food do you want to see him actually cook? Is there some specific item food? Let me know if you guys also have any recommendations for videos you want to see from me on this channel. Since it's a brand new channel, I'm willing to take in all your suggestions. Thank you for watching, guys. We are going to be finishing this as our Easter dinner. Even though it's late, it's like 8 or 9 o'clock. It's kind no, of past dinner time. It's 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Anyways, guys, do you have anything you want to say to them? Learn how to cook. Tell them to subscribe, too. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe if you want to see more Jeff. Anyways, guys, thank no you so much for watching. Me. They do want to see you. If you guys want to see Jeff, let them know. He doesn't think anyone likes 
to watch him. But as I said, if you had your own channel, people would watch you. That's it. All right, bye-bye. Anyways, bye, guys. <laughs>